Chapter 14, Working Together. The next day, I was pleased to see that Phoebe remembered her homework again. I was certainly glad I'd changed the cards to make her homework collector. Holly seemed really happy being helpful all day long, especially because Mrs. Brisbane kept her busy, busy, busy. Slow down Simon had slowed down quite a bit because as door and line monitor, he had to wait for the rest of the students to line up. Hurry Up Harry was never tardy after recess or lunch because he had to leave when the other students did. And he was never late in the morning either. I guess the Idos still hadn't figured out the living room clock was fast. Be careful Kelsey was extremely careful when she handed Og out of his tank. Don't be scared Og, I said. I'd never let anything happen to you to such a special frog like you. Just Joey tidied up his cage again, my cage again, even though it didn't really need it. When Mrs. Brisbane came to check on him, she told him he'd done such a good job, she'd let him train all future animal handlers. Joey was overjoyed. Did, did you hear that, Humphrey? He asked me later. I'm a trainer now, not just a handler. Mrs. Brisbane really trusts me. I could see Joey's job was doing him a lot of good. In fact, all of Brisbane's buddies seemed happier with their jobs, except two of them. Tall Paul and Small Paul had worked together to clear the bulletin board, but they still hadn't put anything up there. Mrs. Brisbane had taken out boxes full of art supplies and paper, maps and posters, but they just couldn't seem to agree on what to put up. Small Paul wanted to make the whole thing theme about autumn. Tall Paul wanted to make the theme about animals. Then Small Paul wanted the bulletin board to be about airplanes, and Tall Paul wanted it to be about cars. How about airplanes and cars? Transportation, Mrs. Brisbane suggested. Oh, sorry, my nose is itchy. The Pauls didn't like think those went together. I thought about the two Pauls. I, I thought that the two Pauls didn't go together. I had obviously made an unsqueakably bad mistake when I decided to pair them up. Mrs. Brisbane, I don't think Paul G and I make very good Brisbane's buddies, Small Paul told Mrs. Brisbane after lunch on Tuesday. Maybe we should switch us with someone else. You have to learn to work with people who aren't like you, the teacher explained. You'll have to do it many times in your life. Small Paul looked miserable. He won't even try. And what about you? Are you trying? Mrs. Brisbane asked. Small Paul didn't answer. You can do it, Paul, I squeaked from my cage. Og tried to encur be encouraging too. Boing, boing, he twanged. Mrs. Brisbane looked over at us. Look at those two. Can you think of two animals who are less alike than Og and Humphrey? That's right, he's an amphibian and I'm a mammal, I agreed. And yet they share that table and actually seem to enjoy each other's company, Mrs. Brisbane continued. He's cold-blooded and I'm warm-blooded, I added. So I think two boys who are the same age and at the same class and both like things like planes and cars can learn to work together, don't you? Mrs. Brisbane certainly made sense to me. I guess, Paul said. He didn't sound convinced though. So give it another try, Mrs. Brisbane told him, for Humphrey and Og, okay? I crossed my toes and hoped they'd try. They did have a chance to work together later in the day, but they didn't talk at all. They just stared down at the boxes of art supplies. Something I hadn't planned on for happen, I hadn't planned for, happened next. Mrs. Brisbane asked Holly to return some playground equipment to Mrs. Wright. There were several bats and a box of balls. Helpful Holly had a little trouble carrying them all at one time. The bats crashed to the ground, the box tipped over, and the balls bounced all over the floor. She picked them up and then admitted she needed some help. Would you like to ask someone else to help? Mrs. Brisbane asked. Holly looked around the room and I almost fell off my tree branch when she picked rolling Rosie. The smile on Rosie's face told me she was pleasantly surprised. I can carry the box on my lap, Rosie suggested. You can take the bats. Good idea, Holly said. After they had left, Mrs. Brisbane told the rest of the class, that's what I like to see in my classroom, working together. That's why I came up with Brisbane's buddies. Small Paul glanced at Tall Paul when he heard those words. 
I couldn't hear him, but he said something to Tall Paul, who nodded. Soon they were actually talking as they pulled things out of the box. A little later, Small Paul asked, Mrs. Brisbane, could we borrow your pictures of the kids in the class and go to the library? We need to scan them into the computer. She was surprised. Of course she said yes and wrote a note to Mr. Fitch, the librarian. The Pauls were both smiling when they came back. After school, Mrs. Brisbane seemed unsqueakably pleased with herself. Just before she left, she came over to our table to say goodbye. Brisbane's buddies seem to be working out, she said, even though I'm still not sure how those cards got switched around. Did Aldo do it? She laughed. You couldn't tell, I, you wouldn't tell him if he did. You wouldn't tell on him if he did. Sorry, that was true. The next morning, Small Paul and Tall Paul together asked Mrs. Brisbane if they could put up their bulletin board during recess. Yes, she said. I just hope Mrs. Wright doesn't find out. She wants all students to get fresh air. Tall Paul laughed, ran over to the window, opened it, and took a deep breath. There, I've gotten my fresh air. Small Paul raced over and did the same thing. Me too, he said. Ooh, it kind of seems like they're getting along a little bit. Then they returned to the bulletin board. I made a plan, Small Paul said, showing Tall Paul a piece of paper. I was glad to hear someone else in room 26 made plans besides just me. Tall Paul studied it carefully. That should work, he said. I guess I'll take the top part. Okay, Small Paul replied. I'll take the bottom. I climbed up to the tippy top of my cage to watch as the bulletin board magically came to life. Tall Paul put up letters across the top reading, Brisbane's buddies, we work together. Meanwhile, on the lower half of the board, Small Paul put up pictures of the students Mrs. Brisbane had taken on the first day of school. The boys had enlarged them on the computer and printed them out. He put them in pairs across, according to their jobs. Next, Tall Paul put pictures on the upper half of the board. When they got to the middle, they worked together and didn't seem to mind one bit. They worked quickly in order to finish just before recess ended. Now, add the drawings we did last night, Tall Paul said. Soon the job titles were, uh, were accompanied by drawings of boys the boys had made depicting each job. For Animal Handler, there were excellent drawings of Og and me. Suddenly, I had an awful thought. They won't need two animal handlers if they move one of us to room 18, I told Og. Og splashed loudly in his tank. They were angry kind of splashes. By the time the other students in the room returned, the bulletin board was finished, and it looked great, great, great. All the kids seemed to enjoy having their pictures on the board. I enjoyed having mine up there too. But what I really enjoyed was seeing that my plan worked after all. Small Paul and Tall Paul walked out of the classroom together at the end of the day, talking about getting together with their planes and cars. I don't think either of them noticed that they weren't the same size. Phew, I said when Og and I were alone again. We did it, but it was a lot of work. Boing, 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 Og agreed. Aldo came in later to clean the room. I'm glad to see you two are still together, he said. Richie told me that Miss Becker said she decided on which classroom pet she wanted. My tummy did a flip-flop. Which one of it is? Which one of us is it? I squeaked. She said it would be a surprise, Aldo added as he swept under the table. She'll tell them tomorrow. Oh, and she said Miss Mack helped her make up her mind. My tummy did a somersault. Miss Mack loved, loved, loved me, so of course she told Miss Becker to pick me. I still missed my old friends from last year, so why did I feel sad about leaving room 26? Aldo spent a lot of time in our classroom that night because he brought a stack of extra chairs and left them in the corner. Mrs. Brisbane says she's going to need these tomorrow, he explained. Why did Mrs. Brisbane need more chairs? Was she going to get more students? If so, wouldn't she need a helpful classroom pet more than ever? Later, I wrote a few more notes in my notebook. Reasons I'm sad about leaving room 26. One, leaving Mrs. Brisbane. Two, leaving Og. Three, leaving my new classmates just when I started to like them. I opened the lock that doesn't lock and strolled over to Og's tank. Og, old friend, I think I'm going to leave room 26, I said, even though I don't want to. Og bounced up and down so hard I thought he might pop the top off his tank. 
boing, boing, boing. I'm sure you'll still help the students with their problems, I said, and I'll come visit you every night. I'll calm down a little then. Maybe Mrs. Brisbane will bring another pet into the keep you company, a cold-blooded animal like you. I thought that would make him feel better, but I don't think it did. He dived into the water side of his tank, splashing furiously. I understood. I went back to my cage, but I didn't sleep much that night. My last night in room 26. Humphrey's Rules of School. Work together, please. And I believe 15 is the last, yep, 15 is the last chapter, so only one more chapter to go.